in many applications of X-rays in crystallography, we need to use an X-ray beam of a single wavelength or a monochromatic beam of X-rays. Now, how to get a monochromatic beam of X-rays from the X radiation that comes out of an X-ray tube? As we all know, from the X-ray tube, we get a host of X-ray wavelengths which constitute the white radiation and also when the X-ray tube is operated above a threshold voltage, we get what are known as the characteristic radiations K alpha and K beta. Out of all these wavelengths, K alpha has the highest intensity. So, when we want to use a monochromatic or single wavelength X-ray beam, what we do is we filter out the K alpha wavelength from the total X radiation coming from the tube made up of the white radiation and the characteristic radiations. So, now I will describe the principle behind this procedure of filtering out the wanted K alpha radiation from the unwanted uh, white and K beta radiations. Now, let us suppose we have a metal nickel. Let us take a metal nickel. So, if we have a thin sheet of nickel and we do an experiment say in which we bombard this thin nickel sheet by excess of different wavelengths. Say we do a hypothetical experiment where we have a piece of nickel, a thin sheet of nickel and we bombard it by excess of different wavelengths starting from a high wavelength of say 2.5 angstrom and going up to say about 0 0.5 angstrom. So, the experiment is we are bombarding a thin foil of nickel by X-rays of varying wavelengths. Now, if we do that and if after every bombardment we find out how much of the beam is transmitted, if we find out how much of the incident beam is transmitted, we can find out how much is absorbed also. So, the, in the total beam, it will transmitted beam, part of the beam will be, so to say, absorbed by the nickel piece. So, we start with say 2.5 angstrom wavelength X-rays and find out how much of it is transmitted so that we can find out how much is not transmitted or rather how much is absorbed by the material. Now, if we plot mu by rho of the material that is nickel here versus the wavelength, then we see that there are the plot shows a behavior similar to this. So, we start with say 2.5 angstrom wavelength of X-rays. In the second experiment, say it is 2 angstrom X-rays, then 1.5, say 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, in this way 0.5. And at each, after each experiment, from the transmitted 
intensity, we find out how much is mu by rho and then plot those mu by rho values in this manner, join them by a smooth curve. Now, if we look at this, we find that mu by rho essentially can be written as k lambda cube z cube, where z is the atomic number of the absorbing element, k is a constant whose value is different for the two different parts of the curve and lambda is the radiation with which the nickel is bombarded in this case. Now, corresponding to each and every wavelength with which we bombarded the nickel piece, we can find out how much is the corresponding value of the energy of the X-ray quantum. And this we can easily find out from the well-known relationship lambda is equal to H by mv. So, if we know the lambda value, the wavelength of the radiation, then using this relationship where H is Planck's constant, m is the mass of the <coughs> photon, v is the velocity of the photon, we can find out how much is the corresponding energy per quantum and that has been plotted here. So, this plot shows the energy per quantum of X radiation having different wavelengths as shown by this line. So, what we find, what is the behavior of this plot? You see, as we start bombarding the nickel piece with say a wavelength of X rays, say 2.5 angstrom and from the transmitted beam we calculate then this is the value of the mu by rho of the specimen for this particular wavelength. Then say we take a wavelength of X radiation which is 2 angstrom and use it to bombard the piece of nickel and the mu by rho is given by this point here. However, as we come down to a wavelength slightly less than 1.5 angstrom wavelength, we find the value of mu by rho suddenly jumps you know to a high value. So, for this particular wavelength, the mu by rho is has gone up to 350 centimeters square per gram. Beyond that again the same kind of behavior is followed. So, uh, when it is 1 angstrom wavelength, you know this is the mu by rho, when it is 5 angstrom wavelength, this is the mu by rho, etcetera, etcetera. Now, what essentially happens when the nickel piece is bombarded by X radiation having a wavelength slightly less than 1.5 angstrom. You see, if you look at the top plot over here, this particular wavelength corresponds to a value of energy given by this point. So, you can find out the energy corresponding to this particular wavelength. So, essentially what happens is as we are bombarding the piece of nickel by X radiation of different wavelengths, naturally lower the wavelength more is the penetration power of the X rays and therefore, less will be the value of mu by rho. So, this is exactly what happens here. Now, when we have come to a wavelength as given by this point as over here, the X ray quantum corresponding to that particular wavelength, its energy is such that that X-ray quantum is capable of knocking out a, an electron from the K-shell 
of nickel. So what will happen? There will be a fluorescent radiation. That means X-ray will be produced from this material and it will be going out of the system. So for all practical purposes, it will appear as if the material has absorbed quite a bit of energy which was incident on it. So that is the reason why the mu by rho value becomes so high at this point. That means any X-ray quantum having this much of energy or this much of wavelength is capable enough to knock out an inertial electron from one of the atoms of the piece of nickel. So when this happens, the, there will be production of X-rays. So there will be the production of the characteristic radiation from nickel which goes out into space. So as a result, when you look at the transmitted beam, we automatically notice that the intensity of the transmitted beam is much, much lower as if that extra energy has been absorbed by the material. That is the reason why we find that mu by rho suddenly shoots up. Now this particular wavelength here is known as the K absorption edge wavelength of nickel. So this particular wavelength here is known as the K absorption edge wavelength of nickel. Now in this diagram we have plotted part of the white radiation along with the K beta and K alpha wavelengths as we observe from coming out of a copper tube. So this left hand side diagram shows part of the white radiation along with the K beta and K alpha from an X-ray tube with copper as a target material. So this particular K alpha is copper K alpha and this particular K beta is the copper K beta. Now copper K alpha has got a wavelength given by say 1.542 angstrom. Now if we superimpose on this diagram, if we superimpose on this diagram, the previous diagram, for example this particular diagram here, see if we superimpose this particular diagram onto this particular diagram. So you see that the mu by rho versus lambda plot is this one. So here we have superimposed the mu by rho versus lambda plot for nickel on top of the radiation coming out from a copper target. Now what we find here? We find that mu by rho that means the mass absorption coefficient of nickel is very high for any wavelength less than the K alpha wavelength. You see at every point the mass absorption coefficient is very, very high. On the other hand, when it comes to the K alpha radiation, the mu by rho value is very low. And again for other wavelengths on the right hand side, the mu by rho value increases. What does that mean? That if we use a nickel, you know, in front of the radiation coming out of a copper target in an X-ray machine, most of the radiations other than K alpha will be absorbed to a much higher degree than the K alpha radiation itself. So in other words, the output of, you know, um, of the X-ray machine when it goes through a nickel filter will be containing mostly the K alpha radiation along with lower intensities of K beta and other uh, white radiation components. So nickel can be used as a filter in case of a X-ray machine having copper as a target material. In this way, we can figure out what kind of filter material we can use 
to have the Kalfa radiation from different kinds of targets. So, as you have seen already for copper, we can use nickel as a filter material which will filter out the Kalfa radiation from all the unwanted radiations. One thing we must remember the filtering action is not perfect because although Kalfa radiation that will come out will be the strongest radiation, there are other radiations also may be weak ones. So, it is not a perfect filtering. Then if you have a molybdenum target, then use zirconium as a filter material. If you have a cobalt uh, a target, use iron as a filter material. If you have iron as a target, use manganese as a filter material. You have chromium as a target, you use vanadium as a filtering material. So, in fact, if you look at the uh, atomic numbers of the filter materials and the target materials, we will find that the filter material should be such which will have uh, a, an atomic number 1 or 2 uh, you know different from the target material. For example, for copper it is nickel you know atomic number difference is only 1. So, in this way it is possible to figure out when you are using a, an x-ray machine with a particular type of target material what should be uh, used, which material should be used as a filter material in order to get a more or less uh, monochromatic or single wavelength radiation.